What if Obi-Wan joined the dark side with Anakin? One of the most ardent defenders of the Galactic Republic and the Jedi Order was Obi-Wan Kenobi. He was a figure who, if he had turned to the Sith, would have shocked the Star Wars community. When Anakin Skywalker swore allegiance to Palpatine in 19 BBY, you might be left wondering what would have happened if Obi-Wan had turned to the dark side. I offer an intriguing situation for you if this concept has ever occurred to you. In this case, Anakin would have taken advantage of Obi-Wan's own suffering, even claiming that anyone else he admired or loved would not suffer the same fate as Kagan and Satine cries. Then Obi-Wan would give in, team up with Anakin, and aid in the purging of the Jedi. How come Obi-Wan would switch to the dark side? Many saw Obi-Wan Kenobi as an ideal Jedi because he upheld the Jedi Code to the letter. But when you consider Kagan Jin and Anakin Skywalker, the two Jedi with whom he interacted the most, Obi-Wan certainly may have had a different opinion of the Jedi. Because of his failure to adhere fully to the Jedi Code, Kagan was known to some as a Grey, as Obi-Wan points out in The Phantom Menace. Even though Obi-Wan did not share Qui-Gon's opinion of the Jedi, he was nevertheless aware of how the former Jedi perceived the Order. Given his response when he learned that Anakin had fallen to the dark side in Revenge of the Sith, Obi-Wan would not have been completely affected by this, though. The legendary confrontation between Obi-Wan and Anakin, who is now known as Darth Vader, would still take place on Mustafar in this possible reality. Vader would be more forthcoming with Obi-Wan about his decision to join the dark, the dark side in order to save Padme from dying during childbirth during the duel. The Jedi, he would say, would never have supported him or Padme. Obi-Wan has a flashback to the times Kagan questioned or was at odds with the Jedi. Vader also reminds Obi-Wan about the Jedi Master's own love interest, killed by Maul during the Clone Wars. He claims that, if the Jedi allowed for open relationships, she could probably still be alive. As the two return to Padme, who has recovered from Vader's earlier force choking, Obi-Wan closes his lightsaber in rage. But even after seeing how terrible Vader and Obi-Wan are, Padme still passes away during childbirth, further infuriating the two. This results in a clash with Palpatine. Vader kills the Emperor in a tense confrontation with Obi-Wan because he never lost to Kenobi, hence he no longer needs his uncomfortable outfit. The rule of two is broken by the pair instead of Master and Apprentice, and the Sith sees total dominance of the galaxy. Luke is brought to Tatooine by Yoda rather than Obi-Wan, and Yoda stays with him there rather than going to Dagobah. Leia is still driven to Alderaan by Bail Organa. Enter Maul. Maul is a figure that has been overlooked in this scenario and we must discuss him. Maul was a Sith Lord in the original timeline, but since Palpatine defeated him, he sought retribution by averting the establishment of the Empire. Make sure to hit the follow button, give us a thumbs up, and leave your thoughts down below if you're new here. Maul died in 2 BBY following a quick duel against Obi-Wan on Tatooine. But since Obi-Wan is with the dark side and Yoda is watching over Luke, Maul never dies on Tatooine. Obi-Wan was always Maul's target, and this does not change when Obi-Wan is a Sith Lord. As a result, Maul will keep after Obi-Wan and Anakin in an effort to establish his own supremacy over the galaxy. Luke also experiences Maul's presence as a dark force at an early age age, and this terrible energy will stick with him for the duration of the original trilogy. The Original Trilogy's Events Luke would still cross C-3PO and R2-D2 as we saw in the original trilogy, but Leia would scream for Yoda instead of Obi-Wan Kenobi, who had saved her in 9 BBY. Essentially, Yoda would be the primary character in the Obi-Wan Kenobi miniseries, with a duel between him, Obi-Wan, and Vader during the climax moment that Yoda would win. Luke would run into Yoda at 0 BBY, and Yoda would play Leia's message. And Yoda, not Obi-Wan, would teach Luke how to use the Force. The Death Star's tractor beam still grabs the pair when they run into Han Solo, who drives them to Alderaan. Obi-Wan and Vader would be defeated by Yoda, who would then sacrifice himself as the tractor beam was shut off, allowing the remainder of the crew to escape to Yavin 4. Invasion of the Empire 
the Death Star would still be destroyed by Luke under the guidance of Yoda's Force Ghost, and A New Hope would conclude as it did in the original timeline. Before Luke succumbs to hypothermia three years later on Hoth, Yoda would speak to him and advise him to flee to Dagoba. Here, with the guidance of both his Force Ghost and Kagan Jin's Force Ghost, he would learn the ways of the Force. Jin would go on to tell Luke that Obi-Wan Kenobi betrayed Anakin and was killed by Darth Vader, who is now known as Darth Rhine. Kagan would be willing to instruct Luke since he would see a lot of Anakin in him, unlike Yoda, who resisted doing so in The Empire Strikes Back. Yoda believed Leia was a better fit for the original trilogy events since Luke was too similar to Anakin, while Kagan would prefer this. Kagan would favor Luke above Leia. Leia since he did not adhere to the Jedi Code entirely. Yoda would also agree to it because he has prior training experience with Luke. When Luke learns his buddies are in danger, he nevertheless abandons his training for Cloud City on Bespin. Still, Luke would face Vader and engage in a combat with both of them, learning the reality that Vader is Anakin Skywalker and also learning who Obi-Wan is. Back to the Jedi Luke still saves his buddies from Jabba the Hutt and rejoins the rebels during the events of Return of the Jedi. The four spirits of Kagan and Yoda tell him that in order to finish his training, he must face Vader and Rhine, so he returns to Dagobah in the hopes of doing so. Luke will meet up with Han Solo, and the rebels will learn that Vader and Rhine carried out their plans to construct a second Death Star, which is now protected by an energy shield. To take down the shield generator and free the rebels to attack the second Death Star, Luke travels to Ender with Han Solo, Leia, and Chewbacca. Leia is still informed by Luke that they are siblings, that Vader is their father, and that Rhine was formerly Vader's Jedi Master. He also reveals his intentions to confront Vader and Rhine in an effort to persuade them to turn to the good side. Vader is crossed first, who continues to embrace the evil side despite Luke's efforts to persuade him otherwise, and Luke still submits to the Imperial Army to face the pair. Vader brings Luke to Rhine, where the former Jedi Masters use the destruction of a rebel spacecraft to demonstrate the second Death Star's power. Similar to the original trilogy, there is a time where Luke is supposed to be forced into allowing his fury to flow through him. However, Rhine and Vader both seduce Luke in this scene. Luke, though, comes close to caving in by attempting to attack Kenobi. Where has Maul been keeping secrets? Being the crafty and intelligent figure he is, Maul has been observing this entire, entire episode from a distance, waiting for the right opportunity to strike. He manages to board the same vessel that Luke is using to meet Rhine in Vader. The former Sith Lord is difficult to capture due to Maul's strength and rage. Similar to how Yoda and Obi-Wan battled against the clone troopers at the Jedi Temple in Revenge of the Sith, he decimates the stormtroopers. Maul now has some breathing room to watch how this conflict develops. He could then put an end to Luke, Vader, and Rhine and seize control of the galaxy. The Battle Luke strikes out in rage. But Rhine, anticipating the assault, dodges it and raises his lightsaber, forcing Luke and the two ex-Jedi into a two-on-one fight. Luke tries to persuade the two to choose the light side during the conflict, but they reject him. He triumphs, proving that despite having limited Jedi training, his force ability is on par with Rhine's invaders. Luke repeatedly defeats the pair, but he refuses to kill them because he believes they still have some redeeming qualities. Rhine and Vader, though, keep moving forward until Luke delivers a punch to the Sith Lord that severances the prosthetic hand that Anakin had been wearing in the earlier timeline. Once more, Luke almost lets his rage take control of him and rushes in to kill Vader, but he stops short and says he won't kill his father. Luke turns to leave the group, but Maul charges in and he is forced to use his lightsaber once more to defend himself from Maul's rage. Given their past interactions, Rhine also enters the fray with the goal of finally disposing of his foe. Maul uses Force Lightning to attack Rhine and Luke. Maul is killed by being thrown down the reactor shaft after Vader picks up Luke's lightsaber and uses it to slice Maul, just like Obi-Wan did in The Phantom Menace. It's over. Vader and Rhine switch back to the light side as a result of the action. 
Luke guides the group as they flee to Ender, where he explains that Maul, a former Sith Lord and Kenobi's adversary, was the dark force that had been following him all along. Because of their valor against Maul and their simultaneous efforts to put an end to Sith Dominion, Vader, now known as Anakin again, and Obi-Wan receive pardons for their wartime crimes. They are unaware that Maul, not Palpatine, had been working hard to build ships on Exegol. Kenobi, Luke, and Anakin would be working hard to rebuild the Jedi Order while Maul waited until he came across a vessel powerful enough to house his consciousness.